What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're installing an eBay performance chip into my E28 and we're gonna test the difference on track. Okay guys, so we're gonna get started. This is the DME, it's an original E36-325i DME, so M50B25. It is the red label ECU with code 413, which means it's an early model that doesn't have EWS. So this is quite important for uh, swapped cars. Now, I have a spare one of these, and this is the one I'm gonna use to put in the performance chip I bought on eBay. It's a 30, 30 dollar eBay chip, and it's supposed to give me 20 horsepower extra, which I highly doubt and it will raise the rev limiter from 6500 to 7000. To put this chip into this DME, uh, I've myself, I've watched a video on it and normally it shouldn't be that hard. Basically you only need three tools, a flat screwdriver, I'm just using this small socket set, and then two Torx sockets. One is a T20, which will fit into the larger screws, and then I have a T10 for the three really small screws on the back. It doesn't exactly fit with the T10. I think you need an even smaller size, but I don't have it, but I tried, this works. You just have to be a little bit careful. So as you can see, we have four screws on the front, one over here, over there, and then on the, s on the other side as well. And on the back side, again, four big ones, right here and right there. Once all these are loosened, then we need to pry these little plates over. So I um, don't know if you will be able to tell, but the front cover, the big one, is clamped onto the back cover with these metal pieces that are pried over. So we need to pry them up. And that way, normally the cover should come off. I have tried this with a flathead, they go quite easily. clips are right open and oh there she goes so as you can see this front cover comes off this is what we get to see and right here this is where the original chip sits behind this white covering plate we have to take that plate off and then the chip we can normally pry it off this is what we've got right now so this is the inside of the ECU with the cover off and this is the chip, the original chip that we're going to replace. This was a plastic that was over there, you see these little holes, just stick a screwdriver in there and pull it outwards and it comes off. This is the chip that we have, you can see the same and uh, I'm looking for orientation and I see that on this side there's like a little chip out of it and that's the same on this side so I guess I have to flip it 180 degrees and put it in. So I believe it's just pressed in with all these pins that make the connections. So I just have to pry it up and it comes out. Now let's see if we can pry this chip out of there without damaging anything. Try and pry. Try not to use the board as leverage, but my finger. Oh, and there she comes. All right. So original chip, so just like this. Make it line up with the holes and push it in just like that. So that was really easy. And then just put this cover back on just like that. Now we're going to close it up again and then later today we're going to try it in the car and see if it actually does something. later it's back together and like I said two of these clips they broke this one almost completely broke as well these three are alright I guess these clips are designed that way so uh, that way you can know when someone has opened this ECU 
Okay, so that means we're already done with installing the chip. So the way I was going to test this is by doing a couple 0 to 100 km per hour runs. Uh, first with the ECU that's in my car now, so the stock ECU. And then check the times with the same app on my phone. So it doesn't really matter if it's super accurate uh, because I will use the same app for both tries. So, um, and then with this ECU, I'm gonna do 0 to 100 again, three times or something. And then I'm going to compare it if that makes a difference at all. I don't know. The best way obviously would be to put the car on the dyno again with this ECU, but um, it's not really that easy to do. The dyno where I went last time is at the coast and also it's, it's not the cheapest thing in the world to do. So maybe I'll do it at a later stage, but it's not going to happen soon. I know it would be the best way, but unfortunately that's not going to happen. So yeah, it's gonna be my butt dyno and the 0 to 100, which will hopefully give an, give an indication. There's only one problem. Today it's raining and I really want to try the 0 to 100 when it's dry, because then it's the easiest, I think, to be consistent. Because in the wet, uh, with this car with the welded diff, it just spins so much. So I don't think it's gonna be worth it to try it. There's the chip installed. So we're gonna, just gonna put the ECU in the car. We have nothing else that we need to change. And uh, yeah, so now we need to prepare the car for the track day tomorrow and then uh, we'll see, we'll meet again on track and see what the difference is. We're quickly going to put the thing on the lift and then I'll show you what needs to be done for tomorrow. a little bit of a hassle get this, getting this thing on the lift. So what I'm gonna do is do a bolt check because not so long ago, like two, one or two weeks ago, um, I changed the uh, gearbox and so everything was loose from the exhaust, drive shafts, all that stuff. So I'm gonna check if all those are still tight so that nothing comes loose on track. Then uh, again, my exhaust here came loose, so I need to hang that up a little bit better again. Then I've got a bend, a 90 degree, that I'm going to put at the end here to point the exhaust to the ground. Because my car is a, is a few decibels too loud for the limit at Zolder. The, the limit is like 98 decibels. My car makes like over 100, so I hope that will be enough to keep me from getting penalti penalties. Because if you get two penalties, you have to quit. So this is another transmission. It's also a ZF from uh, an E36 328. Because I thought I had an issue with the last one, but uh, this one was verified to be good by my boss, so I'm sure it was a good transmission. I put it in and uh, the whole assembly makes the same noise as it did before. So I guess it's just some noise due to the clutch that is probably normal. But because I've taken out literally all of the sound deadening in this car, um, yeah, just those noises are all amplified and maybe there's nothing to worry about. So. I don't experience any problems when driving, so I'm sure I'll be fine. Now, the exhaust. So, uh, if you ever want to know how it is to drive a low car, quite a bit of scraping going on here. It's a little bit flat spot, but this isn't the worst part. The worst part is here, the mid damper. You can see, it looks like uh, there's a hole in it already, which uh, of course isn't so, isn't so good. But I had problems with this, this mount right here. So basically, I'm gonna show you like this. This mount, this on top one, this actually came, only come, came to here. And it didn't go up like this. I remade it and uh, point, gave it a little bit of an upwards uh, bend like that. So that the rubber doesn't slide off and that seemed to help. The only issue, issue I'm having now, I just noticed, is that on the rear, it uh, likes to slip off as well. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna re-tighten all of the yeah all of the clamps from the exhaust so that tomorrow I don't have any problems with my exhaust falling off. So this is the end piece I have on my exhaust right now. So as you can see, it goes from a 60 mil to two uh, what's it gonna be? I don't know, 40 mil tips. And so the idea is to make my exhaust just a few decibels um, less loud by pointing the exhaust towards the ground. So that's why I got this 90. And um, this should be the exact same diameter as this. So the plan is I'm going to make a few cuts in, in it, like here. So just a few slices. 
that way I can clamp it down and then uh, I'm gonna see if I can get it over it just enough because of the curve I don't think I'm gonna be able to slide it on very far but uh, if it just holds on and then I put the clamp over I'm sure uh, it will hold up see it's a little bit thicker material so what I also thought of doing is I could take a dremel and dremel this out a little bit but uh, it doesn't fit just like this, it's close. So I think if I make the cuts, I might get it over. So guys, I came to the conclusion that this piece isn't going to work um, because the bend starts too soon. So I really, well, it doesn't fit to start off with. I would drum, have to dremel it out quite a bit to make it fit and still it will only slide on for like a few millimeters. Uh, so yeah, this isn't gonna work. In the other parts car that I found, was well, still a piece of exhaust of a diesel and diesels have pretty big exhausts as well and so I cut this piece off and uh, this inside here is actually the same diameter that I need but as you can see it's just very rusty so it isn't really going on so I dremeled it out a little bit to get rid of all the rust made some slits in it so it can uh, expand a little bit and then I can hopefully put it on there as you can see right now it goes on like a centimeter and then it stops so I'm gonna dr start dremeling out a little bit further so that slides on yeah, about uh, another centimeter at least and then uh, we should be good to go. Okay guys, I went over everything pretty much. Um, all was tight but the only the bolts that connect the diff to the drive shaft those were a little bit, well not loose but not tight so I tightened those. I added a little bit of coolant, the oil is at the max level, so that's good. Um, the wheels are torqued down. What else did I do? So yeah, we did the little exhaust change. So yeah, I'm excited for tomorrow. I hope since, um, since last time, I now have the short shifter. And what else did I change? Uh, I don't really know. Oh yeah, and uh, the performance chip, so... Um, the 7000 RPM limiter, which could come in handy on track. And then it supposedly added a little bit of horsepower. We'll see about that. We'll see if the lap times improve. Um, but I'm confident they will. I'm uh, Tire-wise, I'm on exactly the same setup as last time. Uh, the only difference in the front is that I have added 15 millimeter spacers uh, in the front. So I'm at 30 millimeter spacers in the front. So maybe maybe with a little bit bigger track width I gain a little bit stability, but I don't think it will be noticeable uh, And then so the short shifter, so I'm sure I'm gonna gain some time from the shorter shifts um, Because with the, the normal shifter it always takes a little bit of time So I think that's gonna help the 7000 rpm could help. So I'm quite confident that if I <laughs> can uh, drive a little bit as, uh, as I should, <laughs> then uh, we will improve our time. So that's the goal for tomorrow. I believe my best was a 2.06 or 2.07. I have to look it up. So uh, if I can get to a 2.05 or something or lower, then uh, I will be happy. So I'll see you guys next morning. What's up guys? It's about eight o'clock, Sunday morning. Way too early for a Sunday, Sunday morning, but we're going racing, so I guess it's okay. I'm on my way to the gas station now where I'm going to meet up with uh, Jeroen with his E36 and then we're gonna pick up another mate of mine and then we're going to...
few moments later. So guys, when I was editing this video, I suddenly came to the conclusion that I uh, actually didn't really talk about the chip anymore or how it performed. And basically, I have to say, uh, I'm not disappointed, but on the other hand, I did not feel a difference. So um, it's not that I really could feel the extra power. Um, yeah, my butt dyno isn't that accurate. So I couldn't tell. Uh, obviously, the 7000 RPM rev limiter came in handy on track. Uh, basically. Um, when <clears throat> the 7000 RPM actually did come in handy on track uh, for some corners where otherwise I would just have to shift to a next gear whereas now I could stay in the same gear and basically have to shift a little bit less which um, is going to improve the lap time because each time you shift you lose a little bit of speed some time so that's, uh, that's a good thing so uh, I think part of that is why um, I now was 4 seconds faster than last time. <clears throat> 4 seconds in lap times um, is actually quite a lot. Um, I'm still quite slow, but uh, there's always room for improvement. And last 3 or 4 times that I went there, I always could improve my time, so that's always nice. Um, what I have mentioned, or <clears throat> what I have noticed though, is that um, I use an app on my phone that uh, registers all sorts of stuff like the speed in sectors and your average speed and all that stuff and my average speed over uh, about 15 laps was 5 kilometers per hour higher than when I uh, did not have the chip 
So I think it actually also does add a little bit of horsepower because that's um, power-wise the only difference that there was uh, from last time. So overall, my average speed was 117 kilometers an hour, whereas last time it was 112. So I guess that is proof that the chip actually does something. And uh, I think, well, that extra five kilometer per hour uh, average and uh, basically four seconds quicker lap for 30 bucks is a really, really good deal. So uh, I think I would recommend this chip if you like a little, little bit more. I am gonna say it again, don't expect too much from it because it's really not a completely different car on the street. You don't notice it. It's only just now with the lap times that I've uh, noticed the difference. So I guess now I can end this video. Um, I hope you guys have an idea of the chip. And uh, as I said, it's very cheap. And um, oh yeah, drive-wise, it doesn't change the engine. It, uh, it's a, there was a good tune on it. It didn't uh, yeah, act weird or something, which is also important. So uh, yeah, go for it. I'm gonna thank you guys for watching. And uh, I hope uh, I'll see you in the next video.